Tonight, the World Series of Bowling rolls on with a final full of heavy hitters. We kick things off with bowling's great one, six-time PBA Player of the Year, Jason Belmonte. Belmo takes on two-time major champ EJ Tackett in the opener of the PBA Scorpion Championship next. Wisconsin's finest again, packing Bolero Wauwatosa for a World Series of bowling event littered with legends. E.J. Tackett and the best bowler on the planet, Jason Belmonte, start things off. The Hall of Famer, Tommy Jones in the three-seed spot. Packy Hanrahan goes for win number one, and Anthony Simonson looks to turn the heat up on a certain race. Belmo described the Scorpion Championship as all fire, and he's not wrong. A lot of fire behind us here in Milwaukee again. Rob Stone, the Hall of Famer Randy Peterson here with you. We have four current or future Hall of Famers on tonight's show. Let's start right at the top. Anthony Simonson has the opportunity to make the player of the year race awfully interesting down the stretch run. Yeah, he sure does. I mean, he's got a major title this year. Belmonte's got a major title this year. But Anthony Simonson is the number one seed coming into tonight. The youngest player to win, not one, not two, but three majors. And Rob, at the age of 25, he's approaching a million dollars in earnings on the tour. The reigning U.S. Open champ yeah. needs just one win. But the current leader in the Player of the Year race, none other than Jason Belmonte, as he closes in on his seventh Player of the Year honor as he goes for win number three this season tonight. Yeah, and isn't it kind of cool that your number one player in the world is from Australia, and this is the World Series of Bowling? Jason Belmonte, 14 major titles, a record. He's leading the tour in just about every statistical category. You hear this crowd? I can't even hear myself. I hear them. They're chanting oh your name, my man. The front runner for player of the year, Jason Belmonte. And Belmo opens up with arguably his biggest rival the last couple years. Yeah. E.J. Tackett, both of them standing down on the lane with our Kimberly Pressler. Rob, you said it perfectly because in our pre-show interviews, you actually called E.J. one of your friendly rivals over the past several years. What did you mean by that? Yeah, I mean, every time I look on the standings, it's always E.J. Tackett near the top. So uh, there's never a week where he just doesn't push everybody to, to throw a lot of strikes and it's uh, I've, I've said it to him privately and I'll say it right now he's definitely pushed me to be the player that I am because of how great he is so uh, hopefully uh, he retires and uh, <laughs> earlier than I do and I don't have to worry about him anymore. EJ those are pretty, some pretty kind words what do you have to say about that? You know it's um, really humbling for somebody like Jason to say that to myself um, just knowing where I was when I first came on tour I was pretty confident in myself that I would win at some point and had no idea I'd be where I am today. And it's just uh, very humbling for someone like Jason that's as great as he is to, to say those words. <laughs> well, they seem pretty friendly right now, but I'm thinking about it, 30 seconds when they step on the lane, that's not going to be anymore. Good luck to you both. Good luck, man. Uh, Kim, Kimberly, you're spot on with that one. All warm and fuzzy until the ball hits the lane. Bowling out of EZ Bowl in Bluffton, Indiana, 15-time PBA Tour champion, E.J. Tackett. E.J. coming off of his emotional win with doubles partner Marshall Kent. They wanted to win this one a little bit. Watch this reaction. Today he looks for title number 16, and to do so, he'll have to beat the world's number one, a Hall of Famer, and the reigning U.S. Open champ. I think there was all that extra energy because let's be honest, he, he has struggled on television, or at least he went through a long struggle, particularly on the single circuit. Just getting that win with doubles, you can sense. You can sense this new energy and enthusiasm. Some premature clapping from the crowd.
EJ Tackett making his way to, to the telecast tonight as the number five seed because he was the highest seed that lost in the round of eight. But no, you're right, Rob. I mean, that, that show he put on in the doubles, I mean, he aced every shot he threw. Speaking of acing. The PBA's all-time majors winner bowls out of Orange, 10-pin bowl in Orange, New South Wales, Australia. Six-time PBA Player of the Year, Jason Belmonte. Well, the thunder from down under is back. The winningest player in the history of major championships in professional bowling. The current number one is the front runner for the Player of the Year honors, which would be his seventh, a record tying him with the great Walter Ray Williams Jr. 27 all-time titles, as you mentioned, ninth most all-time, but nobody's won more career majors. 14. Just a little bit early still, dear. Just a little bit early. Yep, I heard it too, Jason. Yep, but he still aced it. Check out that violent ringing 10. This is tough. There's so much energy Yeah. in this arena. And this crowd just wants to keep erupting, but... And they love him. What's not to love, right? By the way, I thought Jason handled that really well, right? You, you don't want to drown out this young person's enthusiasm and energy. Just, hey, just... Just hold it for a second. Wait till the ball hits the wood and then start yelling and screaming and clapping. I'm not sure PDW would have handled it the same way. What do you think? <laughs> and you know we love PDW, oh but more, I mean, than, more than words can say. Uh, there's Jason's uh, arsenal. He's using. Do an you think icon. he would have taken his glasses off when he <laughs> went in for the verbal encounter? Probably. Oh my God. Jason using an IQ tour, at least to start with. He gets his first strike after that opening nine spare. Everything's happening tonight. You know what the beauty of our players is the com the camaraderie, the sportsmanship, as you can take a look at this last strike by Belmonte. I mean, how many times do you see two PGA Tour pros hug it out before they go into a playoff or I mean they just gave each other knuckles right after that shot. That's what makes these guys, our athletes, so special. Attack it back up, second frame. Oh my goodness. I'm not sure I've ever seen that. That's a new one. Well, that's something Jason talked to us about today. He said, how many times this week have I said, quote, never seen that before? And here we have it again. The three, four, six, nine. I'm not sure I've ever seen that in 22 years. Come on, EJ. Oh, cut the, cut the oil. There's oil on the outside part of this pattern. You know that lane does that. Gosh. The tremendous power of EJ Tackett, but he gets it just a little wide right, and there's the lane out on the outside part is real slick on both sides. Remember our lone southpaw, Packy Hanrahan. We'll see him a bit later. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on, hang on. Don't turn your back on him. Get down! Get down and get in your home! Oh, man, we've seen some weird stuff already. We're not even in the commercial break yet. EJ Tackett going with the blue coral venom. Look at this messenger, of yeah. almost a full rotation and just yeah. enough. That's why you can never turn your back on him. Somebody had a great messenger sign in the crowd as well. You know, you know I love my messengers. Oh, what a weird opening three frames for EJ Tack. Belmo working on a strike. Look at that look from him. Hated. Look at those eyeballs bug out. Hated it as soon as it left his hand. Got it too far up the lane. 
and it goes high. He's lucky to just leave the 3-6-10. How bit. about this? Both with open frames in the, okay. rather, tack it with an open frame in the second. Here's Belmo in the third. Well, let's take a look at this 42-foot scorpion. You can already see that the players are playing pretty deep to start. And if that continues, which I think it will, what's going to happen is you're going to see this kind of action right here, where the players are lofting it to that spot. Could you get a thicker line to show me that, please? I'll Could you take a two by four out on that one. Uh, I'll fix it during the break. <laughs> I'm just glad they don't trust me with that thing. <laughs> Some good producing to keep me away from that telestrator. I'm not sure they trust me with it. Well, nobody said they did. <laughs> that one right at target. Oh boy. All right. Yep, yeah, you, you, you're right. You can see it right there, the break point. And let's take a look from up high. This pattern gets a little tricky, especially down lane. You can see that it gets really slick. You get it too far to the right. He's lucky to just leave the two pin. Still up by two, even though it's coming off of an open. Oh my. Boy, spare shooting is a little, a little suspect early on, and he's a good spare shooter. There's a lot of holding of your breath here today. All right, EJ Tackett working on a strike and take the lead here in the fourth. Yeah. Wow. I, I think he's still kind of shaking that one off. Remember his doubles win, he stayed on the right lane the entire time, never missed the pocket. That never touched the left lane. I got a stat for you. Okay. That leave for EJ Tackett at the, at the World Series of Bowling, over 4,000 games, no one has ever left that. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah! What? Oh, come on. Nine pin. <laughs> <clears throat> Somebody just yelled, come yeah. on, Randy. Yeah, they sure did. Yeah, I left an eight pin, not a nine pin. I remember it vividly. Yeah, that's kind of unlucky. Uh, let's be honest. This is not how we saw the first four and a half five and a half frames go. This is strange stuff. I mean, Belmo destined for the Hall of Fame. EJ Tackett, well on his way there with 15 tour titles and two majors. The Scorpion oil pattern is having their way with him. How about that strike? Yeah, come on, you can smile, you can smile. What is going on? Well, that was a ball change for Jason Belmonte. I'm trying to figure out what it is. I'll get to it in a second, but watch this hit. Isn't that crazy? That was the eight pin taking yeah. them down. Yeah, that was the eight Falling pin. Falling forward. The eight pin taking down the four and the two. The Scorpion oil pattern was the toughest here at the World Series of Bowling throughout the competition. The lowest scoring pattern. Yeah, the average is about 206. Oh my goodness. Even that one's getting a stare and a smile. They're it's just trying to figure it out, man. It's gonna be one of those nights, it's Randall. It's gonna be one of those nights. It's gonna be one of those nights. Tackett and Belmo complete match number one here at the PBA World Series of Bowling presented by Pax Blue Ribbon next. Sold out crowd here in 
Wawa well, well, Tosa. Wisconsin. What, what do the kids call it? Tosa. Yeah. That's what I like to call it as well. Rory Clark has been found. Jason Belmonte is still trying to find his comfort zone here tonight. Let's take a look at how each player is playing the right lane. Tackett, if you can believe it, is actually playing it farther left, deeper than Belmonte. But Belmonte is also throwing it faster. A little bit farther to the right is the break point of Tackett. But check out where they are at the arrows. And this is game one. 22 for Tackett. Remember, there's only 39 boards across the lane. Already running out of real estate. Uh, yeah, game one. That's why I think they may go to the big loft once it gets late in this <laughs> tournament. There you go. They might, they might go a little Robert Smith on us. Yeah, yeah. Hey, so, so you know, Rob, you know what I get asked all the time? How, how do you make the ball hook? How do you make it curve? How do you create power? I'm going to show you. Check this out. Look at EJ Tackett and look at the bent elbow right here and that wrist right underneath it. Now watch what he does at the release point. It's just a straight line right there. It's like throwing a yo-yo, my man. Cup it and uncup it. Oh no. God, this uh, Check out those numbers, they're identical. And he goes light. And leaves a 2 8 10. Goes both ways, Last time he, he yeah. split that line, he left a solid nine pin on a double. And now it's a 2 8 10 for Tackett. Makes no sense to me. Oh my! He got the 10. Did the heavy lift him? How did that eight escape? Second open frame, had one in the second, and another here. Watch this. Wow, how does that miss? Big shot here for Belmonte, can take a 25 pin lead. Working on a double. a ring 10 with the roller, right? Here comes, hey, there's your sign. Yeah, I love that sign. A ringing 10 with a messenger coming across. Yeah, I used to do this a lot, said me never. <laughs> Unreal, some of the, yeah, some that, of the hits. Boy, that head pin covered a lot of real estate. Yeah, concussion protocol for the head pin. Leads at 25. We begin the eighth. Uh -oh. Here we go. Four bagger for Belmo. Leads at 35. Take a look at some of the other finishers here. Chris Fye coming in seventh. Chris Prather, who had a huge win on Fox Sunday in 10th. Our guy Kyle Troop in 12. Attack it. Oh, really needed that one in the eighth. I mean, that looked like he parted the Red Sea. Just kind of split the pocket wide open. I tell you what, when it comes to power, EJ Tackett does not get cheated. Watch this hit. Look at that. Five strikes. Two open frames, one spare for Tackett. See the max scores right underneath the player's names. 213 for Tackett. 248 for Palmer. Back to back. Again, look at the accuracy of EJ Tackett. Driver's seat right here for this guy. Sure is. He was fourth at the World Championship on these two lanes on Sunday. See his eighth all-time World Series of bowling win. It's another strike. Okay. You know what we missed yesterday? Tell me. I, ha I left him in the car. It was my bad. But right now, we've got ourselves. Go on, can I please take my second rewrite? A Paps six pack 
alert. They've been waiting. They've been waiting in the trunk for a day and a half, Randy. If Belmo strikes here, he wins $1,500, sponsored by Paps Blue Ribbon in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Please remember to drink responsibly. I'm sorry, drink Wisconsinably. That's hard to say. It's no? very hard to say. It's easier to show on a T-shirt. I bet you that, uh, that the Paps that you left in the car, I bet it's still cold. Oh, it's ice cold. Come on, Belmo. Crack open that six pack. Yeah! Not how he drew it up. I don't care. I got a six pack. Yeah, I'm ready to crack open. Belmonte moving on to take on Tommy Jones, the Hall of Famer. He's going to look at a different ball right here to see if he can see a little bit different picture. I think the picture he looked at here at match number one is one of confusion. Uh-oh. Now what's he going to do? That was a pretty big move. Look at the lines on strike track powered by Kia. Now, decisions, decisions. It's good to have options. Tackett rolling out, leaves the 10 pin. Again, remember Belmo earlier today telling us EJ Tackett, he's been my biggest rival on tour the last five or six years. Belmo's got one more shot to close out. He's already won this match, and he will take on your three seed, Tommy Jones. Packy Hanrahan's the two seed. Anthony Simonson in the one spot. Well, it's going to be interesting to see when we come back which ball Jason Belmonte decides to go with. If I were to guess, I would say he'd stay with the ball that he used this game. Well, EJ's going to be frustrated by that one. 192 for EJ. How about that? Use it. 55 pin win for Jason Belmonte, who moves on. Up next for Belmo, the Hall of Famer. Tommy, don't call me Thomas Jones. And Jason Belmonte set to duel with match number two. The Scorpion Championship rolls on after this. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. Get cash out of your home's equity with a cash-out refi from Guaranteed Rate. Learn more at rate.com. And by Kia and the new Forte GT. It's one fantastic ride. And we are back inside, sold out Bolero. Wauwatosa, 13th World Series of Bowling. Rolling on here from just outside Milwaukee. Tommy Jones, your three seed. He's in action next against Jason Belmonte. As we take a look at the bracket in the qualifying that actually took place today, Randy. Yeah, it did. Top 16 first, and then uh, they got cut down to the top eight to the top four, and it was the best of three in a five-game match. First player to win three games advanced, and we talked about it earlier, EJ Tackett, grabbing that fifth seed because he was the highest he, he was the highest ranked player that actually lost in the round of eight he was the highest rated loser is what you're saying no i didn't that's say that. what ej tackett you, told us that's how he described i it, will never friend. i will never say tackett and loser in the same sentence that's fair that's fair yeah. rob stone he's the hall of famer randy peterson um when you're here in the badger state as always we encourage you to Bull Wisconsin the bully. I still don't know if I can say that right. That word right. Wisconsin bully. Wisconsin bully. Bull Wisconsin bully. There's that shirt. See, he knows how to wear it. That's at least his second night right here. All right, so you know what hasn't been acting responsible? These these two lanes behind us. They're, what an odd opening match. Yeah, they're a little tricky. Even though Jason Belmonte shot 247, 
it was a little suspect, and that's why he went to a different ball in the mm -hmm. 10th frame once the match was over, and I'm not sure he's going to use that ball. So he's probably going to go back to the ball that he used this whole game until the 10th frame. We're, Watch calling, some of these yeah, we're calling this pin action, but it's more like bizarro Yeah, pin it, it really is. I mean, look at this. Great messenger. That's like an all-timer messenger. And then that, that could have been a big four. Look, the, the, the non-verbals right, on Tackett right. and Belmo in the opening match yeah. just kind of stare like they couldn't even celebrate half their strikes. Anytime a player throws a shot and it strikes, if it doesn't and they they make that that stare, that long stare down mm -hmm. down the lane at the pins, they're they're thinking about stuff. They're like, uh, what's going on? Right. Uh, I'm not liking what I'm seeing. Uh, they start doing a little head scratching. You know what you usually see? Hey, yeah, yeah a lot right, of this. Right, Instead right, it yeah. was, uh, uh, like not even blinking, like yeah. a perfect actor, right? Don't blink, don't blink, hold the pose. I don't know what is happening. And now Belmo's got a big decision ahead of taking on the Hall of Famer, Tommy Joe. Yeah. Hold on. They're doing it, Randy. They're doing it again. I love it. What a great crowd. They are chanting Randy here in Milwaukee. You know what that means? What? They have been properly lubricated here in Milwaukee. <laughs> Make sure to bowl and drink Wisconsinably. Uh, Tommy Jones, Jason Belmonte, match number two from the Scorpion coming up next. Last night, it was the PBA Cheetah Championship, Kyle Sherman taking care of your top seed Christian Ascona, 214-184, the big news for Sherman. His second tour title, but first on the single circuit. Indeed. What a great shot he threw in the 10th frame and then goes and gives Dad a big hug. Yeah, that was awesome. Great yeah. moment, wonderful interview with Kimberly Pressler. After that, there's his doubles partner as well. Everybody sharing in the joy as we take a look at your current Kia PBA playoff standings entering tonight's final round. Players earn points throughout the season. Top 16, as you know, Randy, advanced to compete in the Kia PBA playoffs, which start next month. And four of the top six on tonight's telecast. How about that? There's Packy Hanrahan checking in at number 12. Packy is your two seed. Chris Vi and Tom Smallwood just below the cut line currently. Take a look at the updated stepladder bracket. Belmo, 55 pins better than EJ Tackett in our opening match. He's got the Hall of Famer, Tommy Jones, next. A lot of respect. All fire this field. That's what Belmo told us earlier today. It is such a good show. Anthony Simonson, your one seed, future Hall of Famer, waiting to see who he's going to meet in the title game. Oh, really? Oh, oh wow. Could have been a 7-10 instead of just the 7. Great messenger work there on the 10. Well, he stayed with the ball that he finished the game with. It's a hustle. H-Y-B. I'm guessing that stands for hybrid. The hustle hybrid? Yep. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Got it. Oh, boy. What do you call that? What do you call that, Rob? I don't know. I, I'm not going to put that in this, the skinny jean category. No? No, no. But right. here's Tommy Jones. He rolls out of Golden Lanes in Simpsonville, South Carolina. PBA Hall of Famer, Tommy Jones. Well, Rob, apparently Tommy has signed a deal with Father Time. <laughs> at, age 40, at age 43, he's having an amazing year, even without a win. Fifth at the players, fifth at the Tournament of Champions, sixth at the U.S. Open, and third at the World Champions. It's World Championship. All majors. Tonight, he goes for title number 21. We asked him about the season. He said, really good, but frustrating. Without and, the, and, and you understand it, without getting that win. Yeah, without the W. I mean, but still. I mean, this guy is just, what a resurgence. 43 years old, 22nd year on the tour. <laughs> Well, Tommy still provided, I think, both of us with one of one of the more magical PBA moments. Inducted into PBA Hall of Fame in 2020. The next day, I mean, literally hours after the celebration, yeah. 
goes out, drops a 300 game, and wins the PBA Hall of Fame Classic. 300 game in the title match. Right. After shooting 190 and getting by Chris Barnes. That was such a cool, such a cool event. Show. So neat to be a part of it. Just take a look at Tommy's arsenal. Yeah, he's using the Black Widow Ghost. Well, the 310, they call it the baby split because you can actually make it by covering both pins with the bowling ball. Is that how you do it? That's how I would do it. Just catch the right side of the three pin and the ball will deflect into the 10. Open frame. So, I'm going to take you guys inside, kind of pull the curtain away, right? We've got these cards that get handed to me by our stage manager. And yeah. It's like, hey, here's the spare of the game, sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. Da, da. This card has been handed to me about 12 times already today, <laughs> and I haven't been able to use it. So, Guaranteed Rate, we'll get you your plug in just a moment, but we need a, a good spare conversion. And we've had tons of great spare conversions here. Belmo gets a strike. But again, kind of a cool customer strike, not exactly a, a celebratory strike. Yeah, this was cool. Only five bowlers in the history of the PBA have ever won Rookie and Player of the Year honors. Three of them on our show. Tackett, already a limited. Belmo sitting there as our four seed. Tommy Jones, our three seed. There's a great Mike Albee. What a career he had. Chris Barnes's son is going to be in action in the coming days with the Collegiate Invitational we'll, Show. We'll see him on Sunday, right? Yeah. How about that? Hold on tour for how long? And now, now my son's going to be on. He's going to be on FS1. Yeah. That'll hate you fast. Ball speed approaching 20 miles an hour, rev rate at almost 540 RPM. And this ball digs pretty hard through the 1 3 pocket, leaving the 4 pin. This week, Belmo's dropped all of these here in the Scorpion competition. Kick that one in. I, I, I am with you, Randy. Like, I have to get out of my seat and audibly inhale, exhale loudly for it to be skinny jeans. Gotcha. But I will say those, those last two conversions, they've been tight. Okay. They've it, it, been a little snug. Like, you, you got to go to the, the seamstress. Like, take it out a little bit around the, around the waist, a little tight. Oh, boy. Oh. That, that hit the OB and... The lanes are really, really slick out there. As you can see, look at the breakpoint numbers. Yeah, that's like driving on black ice. How many times have I heard you say, oh boy, today already? I can see it. As soon as the direction gets too steep or going too far to the right, it's going to catch the slickest part of the lane. That's why the players play so deep. That's why they start so deep. They try to get away from that zone and that edge. Good cover there from Tommy. Can't drop. So Jones strike. Open. Spare. Well, remember in the World Championship how, how Tommy struggled, and, and we talked to him about it. He said, I just used the wrong ball. You know, I thought it was the right one, and then tried to make it do something it wasn't going to do, and it was, it was just the wrong piece of equipment. I should have gone to something else. Take him down. Head pin goes to the sidewall and just gets all primeval on the 10. Watch this. That sucker bouncing around. Oh. A little mosh pit action going on in the pin deck. Belmo, spare, strike, spare. 
up 12. We close out the fourth. Second strike of the game. Yeah, that was money. Ball speed up about a half a mile an hour on that shot on the right lane. Belmo can max out with a 270. TJ right there with a 258. Down 22, though. And we're not even through five. Those were two beauties from Bill Monty, mm -hmm. by the way. Sure were. You just like want to shut everything off instead of staying through it. You know, and how much of that shot there was the residue of the shot before on the right lane where he got it wide right? When you're talking to yourself, you know things aren't going well. Tough one here. Leaves it up. Second spare conversion, avoiding the open frame. Ah. I feel like we saw this Sunday from him at the World Championship. Finished third. Well, I thought his execution was fine. It was just the wrong piece of equipment. Right. And, but, it, and it can, you know, based on what your bar reaction looks like, it can look like you're not throwing it very well. Right now, his execution is not Tommy Jones-ish. It's, he's afraid to get it to go to the right. That, that one was almost a Brooklyn. Yeah. Another three board miss at the arrows. Again, the, the ideal line is in blue. Yeah, Tommy's barely waiting for the pins to get cleared out and replaced before he starts firing off. It has been a frustrating start for Tommy. Good news, though, he's got a lot of frames left to try and build this one back up against Belmo. Thirteenth edition of the World Series of Bowling. Rolls on here from Milwaukee. Another packed crowd here in Wauwatosa. Every one of our shows since this, we've been here. This audience has been great. So enjoyable to be around. We'll be back with them tomorrow night as well. So Belmo up here. The lead is at 24, working on a pair of strikes. Trying to get himself the first turkey of match number two. get it oh. well looking at the numbers on strike track powered by Kia really didn't look all that bad but man did that thing break hard left So we go to the seventh, lead at 22 for Belmo. He's gone nine spare strike, nine spare strike strike, and then that eight spare right there.
there for Belmo on the left lane, but the story shifts to Tommy Jones and the right lane, and here's the last two shots on the right frame for Tommy. Yeah, so that was in the third frame, and then here comes the overcompensation shot that goes high. He was so bad. Right now, Tommy Jones needs to figure something out and figure it out quick. Ball change? Yeah, he's going to a big foot. Change worked, and Kimberly, he's got plenty of uh, plenty of balls to choose from this week, doesn't he? He does, and you guys were just talking about the importance of equipment prior to the break, and it's absolutely true out here on the PBA Tour, because case in point, like you just mentioned, Tommy Jones has 27 balls with him, and he drilled 12 of them while here, and that does not even include the ones that he gave away to the fans this week. Just goes to show you guys that they are constantly tweaking their equipment to find whatever edge they can. 12 drilled balls. What was like the max for you typically? Uh, it wasn't 12. <laughs> Double figures? Nope. No, no. You gotta get a better sponsor back there, man. <laughs> nice strike there from Tommy. And so the move paying off there. Well, when we went to break, he was Are talking with his tour rep. Jones. And he said, I'm gonna go to the Bigfoot, I'm gonna move in, and I'm gonna knock the snot out of it. Is that what he said? He's gonna knock the snot out of it? Well, it's... You're paraphrasing, sounded, aren't you? Yeah, it sounded kind of like that. Because we heard it, and that's not what he said. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you, there's some snot residue on the side right now, because he did pretty darn well those last two shots. Here's Belmo, now up in the eighth. Lead has been reduced to 12. Back-to-back -back jacks for the world's greatest. Lee goes back to 22. Seems like he always has an answer, doesn't it? Oh, no kidding. You know what's coming, don't you? Is there more football coming? Oh, I can't wait. I U cannot S wait. L is back. Birmingham Stallions, New Jersey Generals, coming away April 16th on Fox and NBC. Again, I've already put my Fox bet money on the Tampa Bay Bandits to win it all. Dude, their jerseys are sick. Oh, they're gorgeous. See the max scores right there. 248 for Belmo, 226 Jones. Oh boy. How quickly things can change. And you gotta ask yourself why. If you look at the breakpoint board on okay. strike track powered by Kia, it's exactly the same, and that's why he's in shock right now. Okay. Anything different. He usually keeps that speed right around the same spot. That's just the lanes being the lanes today, you think? As he leaves I the 2 8 10. I think they're just that that finicky. Not the first time he's seen the 2 8 10 this week. Oh. Woof. Once again, my uh, ah. spare the game brought to you by Guaranteed Rate Card back. is going to the back. Not being used Where again. Where did that come from? 2 8 10 made zero times throughout the Scorpion Championship. Zero? Points. Zero times. Zero. Yeah. All those stats and numbers that you see and all that info that I get comes directly from Lane Talk. For more information, please visit lanetalk.com. All right, an opportunity now for Tommy Jones. Uh, yeah, sure is. And he does not capitalize on it. Are you kidding me with these leaves? Wow, oh, they are gross. Yeah. This crowd is like just wow. waiting to erupt, Randy, and they can't. A another miss by Jones. Two boards inside a target, and he pays for it. Oh, does he ever? 4 7 10. Close. And an open front. Just when he had this opening to seize it from Belmo, he drops his second open frame of this match. The first came in the second, and then one there in the foundation frame ninth. That is a dagger to the back. And he is staggering right now. Well, believe it or not, it's still not over. If he strikes out, Belmonte needs a mark. Again, both had open frames in the ninth. We begin the tenth. Winner to take on Packy Hanrahan. TJ, no. That was bad. He never got comfortable tonight, Rob. Randy, I'm going to give you some advice. Yeah. 
give Tommy his space tonight. Okay. I think, we're gonna, I think you're gonna want to steer clear of Tommy. He's gonna blame it on us. We saw him Sunday, it was a struggle again. I know yeah. he said, you know, made the wrong ball choice, but still it was a struggle for him. Actually, I think he's just gonna blame it on you. Well, that's fair. I'm here, I'll take that for you, Tommy. 30th greatest bowler in PBA history back in 2009. Tommy was voted and he didn't see his best today. And that's frustrating for him, 177. Well, Belmo advances sitting down. Two very kind of anticlimactic wins for Jason Belmonte, but guess what? When you're bowling against the world's best, take the win and move on. He gets a Brooklyn. You're gonna get another one of those looks from Belmo like, what? is happening here. Well, he made a ball change and moved way in. He's he's looking at that other ball. Yeah. You, can I get back to Tommy for a second? Please. Or Thomas? Thomas. Thomas. Do, you think, do you think his struggles the last two times on television had anything to do with the bunk bed? <laughs> That's right. That's right. The, uh, the uh, what was it, the VRBO that I, they had? I, I got that straight from Kimberly. He got the room with the bunk bed, and right. he elected to sleep in the bottom of the bunk bed. Right. And he actually had success. And everybody kind of cleared out. He said, I'm going to stay in the bunk bedroom. Right. And then, you know, Sunday happened at the World Championship. And I said, maybe find another room. Yeah, or yeah. maybe go up, go up top, right? Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, go, go like fourth grader, primeval. Yeah. Sit there and embrace the top bunk. Yeah. And instead, he's chugging water and eliminated again. Belmonte's really looking at this, this next, or this, this new bowling ball, and he's moved way in, and it looks like he's gonna try to do the slow hook. Yeah, this is interesting practice stuff right now. It's still counting to his final score, but he's on a, like a, a search and reconnaissance type issue right, issue right now. I mean, he might do it. You might see him make the change next game. 211-177, the final score, so Belmo gets his second win here at the Scorpion. And up next, he's got Packy Hanrahan, who has never won a title, but Packy, your lone lefty on tonight's show. This kid has got a great story, and wait till you hear what he did over the summer, Randy. You don't know this story yet. Head on over to PBA.com to subscribe to our YouTube channel for classic telecast, including Randy Peterson's win at the World Championship back in 87. Yes, sir. Tournament highlights, exclusive content like the always in demand Kia post show. Go to PBA.com, click the YouTube link, subscribe to catch all the action. All right, again, this is our promise to you, the viewing public. You bring a sign, we're putting you on TV. Oh, somebody's a Bucks fan. Did you see the, the Bucks win last night in Salt Lake? Did not. It's pretty impressive. Simple but effective, right? What a good son. Brown noser. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, take it back. <laughs> Look at your Scorpion Championship <laughs> stepladder bracket. <laughs> Uh, Belmo with two wins, both of them in comfortable fashion, but he, he looks far from comfortable on the lanes today. Yeah, and he's going to go with that that ball change, and that's a UFO, uh, UFO alert. And let's see if we're all going to be alerted to whether or not this ball's going to work. I mean, this crowd is just chomping at the bit to, just waiting, to get aren't crazy they? for something. They want to erupt. They are you joking? There you go. Okay. Remember that, that, that slow roller 10? So it was a ring of 10 and he got that little slow roller messenger. This was exactly the opposite of that. So we need to tell Belmo to channel his inner ginger assassin right now. Well, I would have channeled my inner Mark Roth because- That would have been a good he, advice as well. He's right-handed. I know, I know you. Why you said Ginger's? I, I know you like him. He was in the house like, yesterday. Like you were, you, like you were hanging out with him last night. Oh, it was, it was glorious. Bowling out of North Rock Lanes in Wichita, Kansas, 
2020 PBA League Elias Cup champion, Packy Hanrahan. Well, the lone lefty tonight looking for his first career win in only his fourth season. In 2020, he had a third place finish and a fifth place finish. But in order to get a win tonight, he'll have to beat one of the strongest fields of the season. Bowl collegiately at Wichita State University. You know where he grew up though, don't you? In your neck of the woods. The mean streets of Greenwich, Connecticut. <laughs> You know, so far it's been kind of an adventure for the right-handers through two games and trying to find a consistent line to the pocket. Packy, the only lefty on the telecast tonight, if he finds a home, he may be unbeatable. Yeah, watch out. Left the three pin here. He was four for four through the course of the Scorpion tournament and dropping the four pin. I mean, they get five for five. What happened last night? Remember, remember who won last night? Winning for the first time in a singles event? Kyle Sherman? Yeah, we've had a lot of stuff happen this tournament. Right? I mean, you made the comment about what, that's kind of what the World Series of Bowling is about. You know, you see some fresh face, faces, you see some new faces, you see all the superstars, you see everything. And that's this show, right? Four right. current or future Hall of Famers, and this guy, that's, that was Packy's words to us again. Hanrahan gets a strike here. A real modest, you know, 26 year old. We enjoyed our time with him today. This is a guy who started really late in the bowling world, a freshman year in high school, just kind of picked it up on a large sophomore year. He started devoting a little more practice and time to it. Ended up winning back to back state high school bowling championships at Greenwich High. Look how far left Belmo was to start this shot. His ball speed's come down almost three miles an hour, so he's going to the slow wheel. Yeah, it definitely felt slower, looked slower. Got the result he needed after that open frame in the first. Now he slides over to the left lane. Remember, left the 7-10. In the first frame, did Belmo. Well, well, well! <laughs> you see him give it the stare down? Ooh. He's like, hey, 710. Yeah, I got a little something for you. Yeah, this is what I think about you. Hey, yo, 710. He also might have just been double checking to make sure they all fell, because that's the way things have been going tonight. Hanrahan on the right! Oh, boy, that was almost Brooklyn. Packy leaving the four pin here. Mom and Dad, Abby and Big Packy in attendance. Girlfriend Madison in attendance as well. It's so hard to put. Oh. Did you catch what Packy just said? Mm, Something about slow? I, I, I thought he said close. Oh, close. Let's see if I can. I think it's the no, three, right five, here. six, nine. Now, going after the bucket this week, nothing new for Hanrahan. Three for three here through the course of the Scorpion. And Randy. 
get to use the card. <laughs> do it, do it. The Spare of the Game, sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. If you believe it, you can do it. Guaranteed Rate, believe you will. I'm not sure any of our bowlers today have full confidence that they believe what they intend to do is actually going to happen down lane. That one crossed over. He still made it. Now Belmo working on a double can impose his will. For that speed adjustment. So the move that he made when he went to this ball, how about 15 boards left at the laydown and 10 boards like left at the right? arrows? That is a crazy adjustment. That's not subtle. That's in your face. Dude, that's like a yard left. Wow. Just shot through a re-rack as well. Randy, yeah. I'd like to welcome you to the beer frame sponsored by Paps Blue Ribbon of this beautiful city of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Grabst the Paps today and please drink responsibly or drink Wisconsinably. Did I say it right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, strike on the beer frame! And a hand bone! 20 Greatest beer frame ever! I mean, look at the angle this guy's playing. Bonkers. Ah, Lee. Don't try this at home, kids. I mean, Randy, when that ball hit the wood, it almost touched the left gutter. Yeah, he's, like I said. The ball almost hit the left gutter. Right, well, remember in the open, I said, if it gets there early, you'll see players lofting it over the gutter. Oh! And, and no! Six, eight, That's a good shot. This is going to be tough. Belmonte's getting close to that loft zone. Mm -hmm. Packy Hanrahan doesn't have a good ball reaction. And he doesn't like what he's seeing right now. He's got to try to get that six pin and cut it over into the eight. Open frame for Packy. Again, Packy, the lone lefty on tonight's show. But he's just as confused as the righties are, although it certainly feels like Belma has figured things out. Started with that open frame since then, a four-bagger. Well, that open frame was a pocket 7-10. Could have easily been, been nine spare, right? Absolutely. Or a strike. But it was an open frame. Okay, that, I get the point. Oh, man, what a huge break that yeah, was. Just double wood for Packy. I mean, he could have been down 40 plus going in to the break. A commercial break coming up after the shot, and, and Packy's going to need to meet with his team and have some discussions here. Methodical approach here for Hanrahan as he slides over to the left side, trying to take care of this double wood here. Third time he's faced it through the course of this Scorpion competition. Good pick up. And we go to the break here. Packy, the lefty. Spare strike, spare, spare, open spare. Translation, Jason Belmonte, the world's greatest, is up 36 pins. Welcome back to FS1's coverage of the 13th edition of the World Series of Bowling and the online graphics you see tonight, including the ball tracer, courtesy of Clutch Bowling. How good is the ball tracer, by the way? The ball tracer's been getting a lot of work well, clutch, tonight. Clutch is just amazing. If you're a, a proprietor, you own a bowling center, and you don't have clutch, I'm not coming. What kind of cut do you get from this? None. Oh, I just like it. I think it's really cool. It's fun to watch. Yep. I know our viewers have really enjoyed it. Educational as well. So Belmo working on four strikes. The lead has swelled to 36. He has four in a row? He does. What do you call it? Uh, it's called a ham bone. Look it up. Oh! Yeah! Yahtzee! 
How about he's getting it back from a spot that I didn't think you could get it back from? Dude's dialed in, man. And I think it's I think it's so far off the end of the pattern that it, there's a spot down there. But I mean, look <laughs> at how much angle. <laughs> look where the tracer's picking it up from. Now, if he has to move any farther left, he's, where's, he's where's gonna, he gonna go? <laughs> he's gonna have to start lofting it. <laughs> yeah. He's already got a little bit in it right now. Again, Anthony Simonson is your one seed waiting the winner, and Belmo is cruising right now through Hanrahan. Yep, there's Loft there. Yeah. And look at the ball speed here, Rob. Remember in his first match, he was almost at 20 miles an hour. Yeah. Look at that. Look, wow, the brakes. Dropped it almost four miles per hour. Yeah. And, and you can, it, I, I know maybe this is master of the obvious, but visually it is obvious how much he's been able to slow it down. Yeah. The control he has is amazing. Hanrahan really needs something here in the seven. God, oh, man. Good. All right, so uh, Packy's struggling today, but you know what's coming up, Kimberly? Wedding season is right around the corner, and Hanrahan nailed it over the summer. He absolutely did. Uh, you guys may know that Packy and his sister Maddie are known to be really great friends, so much so that in September, Packy actually officiated her wedding to husband Pat. His mom, Abby, told me today that Packy spent most of the summer working on what he'd say, and apparently it was a big hit. I was told the crowd laughed, cried, and cheered. Got the big three. Right, Kimberly? He got the big three. <laughs> laugh, cry, cheer. Look at the pictures on top. Yeah, does, does that scenery look familiar, guys? Oh, that's because Bayside Bowl. That's exactly where it is. He got married at Bayside Bowl. That's awesome. Oh, these pictures are great. And Kimberly, by the way, just discovered this about an hour and a half ago. Oh, look at them bowling with the outfits on. Oh, that's amazing. So cool. Great story, Kimberly. Look, we, we, we already liked Kathy as it was. We want to see good things from this kid. Did you hear that? There you go. There's the smile that we like to see from you. Did you hear that? There's mom and pop. Yeah, the other story I love about these two is, you know, they, they, they stuck by their kid. They believed in him. And, you know, Packy was telling us, you know, what do you want to be? He's like, well, I went to school to be a gym teacher, so that's what I'm going to do. And mom said, does that make you happy? Is that what you want to do? And he said, no, I want to go. I want to try it out with the best in the world on the PBA. And they said, listen, how long do you need? Oof. And he, Packy said, I don't know, a year or two to figure out if, if I can break even, if I can even make money. And they said, honey, we'll figure it out. We'll support you until you know. And, and Packy's making another show here. Chance he could be on the Shark Show mm -hmm. tomorrow night as well. I, I know it hasn't gone his way today. But I just love the support from the parents. Yeah, man. Uh, just a great, great message out there. So Belmo cleans that one up. Sunday on Fox, the NASCAR Cup Series heads to Atlanta. Battle on a new track. See what driver will rise up and take home the checkered flag. It is the Folds of Honor Quick Trip 500 Sunday at 2.30 Eastern on Fox. If you're not familiar with Folds of Honor, Go hit the Google machine right now. Look it up. It is a, just an amazing, amazing outlet. Leads at 57. We begin the ninth. Yeah, Belmo just a couple frames away from the title match. I mean, it's just... <laughs> it's red on top of blue. Oh, my Lord. He's going to take on... That's it. That's all she wrote. Yeah, he's going to take on Simonson. The last time those two met was at the U.S. Open. Remember when Belmonte made that ball change? He got out of urethane and went and tried to play this exact same line. Shot 168 against Ooh. Simonson. What do you think Anthony Simonson is saying to himself right now? Back behind the bleachers, warming up. Well, he can do As so many go. things with the ball Land. as well. He's, he's so good at pushing it through the front part of the lane, go through the ball. and he can play the exact same line Won't that Belmonte's playing. Tomorrow. I know that Packy made a ball change. We're trying to find out what it is. Somebody wants to send me a text. I'd like to give him his due. That's okay. He was started with a power torque. Oh my God, what is wrong with the approach? Oh boy. Oh boy. And that that's, is. I'm glad that just stayed on the lane. 
thinking about it, and then I, and then I hear it again. He's using a knockout black and blue. So there you go. I owed it to Packy to give him his due. It's the whole approach. There you go. Good clean up there. One more shot for Packy. You know what I'm thinking about right now? I'm, Tell th me. I'm thinking about how Simonson's going to play this championship pair. Is he going to play it like Bill Monty? Is he going to go straighter? What do you think? Uh, I thought he goes reverse style. Well, you want to go back to ball after yeah. Pat, he just so, shot a day, right? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> that ain't happening. I didn't say I had that. good advice. I'm just saying that's what I like to see. Well, we all know he can do it, but yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, he's he's the master. But I tell you what, I I always had great admiration for this man, Jason Belmonte. But that adjustment he made, you know, such a, a stark alteration to the way he started. It's pretty drastic today. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty drastic. And figuring it again, this is just color on top of color. There is right. no white in between. Well, the, and, I mean, what do you attribute that to? His talent. I mean, it's his talent level. <laughs> and you know what? All the players, players know it, and he knows it. You do what you can. He's just, he's just that good. EJ Tackett saying to us today, you know, there's nothing you can do to Elaine to make Jason Belmonte feel uncomfortable. You just hope he doesn't strike. Nothing you can do is going to impact him. That's exactly right. So he's rolling out. He's already has the comfortable victory again. I mean, it's been three routes in a row for Belmo and he's got a shot to to run the ladder and win title number 28. Again the crowd is just kind of getting used to Belmo just taking these shots with the match already in the bank. On oh, purpose. Going for a try. On purpose. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. See you next week. Yeah. yeah. All right. See you tomorrow. Belmo See you tomorrow. versus tomorrow. Simonson. Let's be honest. This is the title match we kind of were hoping for. Anthony Simonson getting ready to raise the roof here in Milwaukee as he goes for tour title number 10. Well, tomorrow night, 8 Eastern, here on FS1, the Fox Sports app. World Series of Bowling rolls on. It's the Shark Championship. Flashback to 2011. The Shark Championship from Las Vegas. Belmo dropped Chris Barnes, 243-213. His third career PBA title. He won three World Series of Bowling titles that year at South Point. Belmo chasing another World Series of Bowling title tonight. He has moved all the way up from the four seed spot. Up next, Anthony Simonson in our title match. And Anthony Simonson warming up. And I don't know if he is right now, but at one point they were using, Anthony was using the same ball that Belmo had? Yeah, playing the same line. So the tracer line is just going to keep following. Oh, yeah. The same shot, the same ball, the same guys. Dude, how about that beard? That thing is full. It's um, it's asking for a trim. Fair to say? Yeah, I don't think it's going to get one anytime soon. No, it's soon. not. It's not. Title match coming up next. Don't interrupt it. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. Get cash out of your home's equity with a cash out refi from Guaranteed Rate. Learn more at rate.com. And by Kia and the new Forte GT. It's one fantastic ride. We're back in Milwaukee. Another sold out crowd here for the 
Scorpion Championship at the 13th edition of the World Series of Boeing. There is your top seed, Anthony Simonson, set to battle with the world's best, Jason Belmonte. He bowls out of the nerd in Las Vegas, Nevada. Nine-time PBA champion, Anthony Simonson. Hey, Rob, you know the uh, youngest player to ever win a tour title? You know who that was? Uh, was Simonson, right? No. Come on. Norm Duke. Simonson missed that by two days. Oh, that's right, because he's the youngest to ever win a major. And then win two majors. And then three majors. At age 25, he already has Hall of Fame street creds. Today, he looks for title number 10. Got that green jacket from the U.S. Open this year. I said today, it's nighttime. Tonight. Tonight. Yeah. That, that beard in full Amish mode right now. Bray Wyatt-esque. Great start for Simo. Well, he's playing him very similar to what Belmonte was doing. But he's got the trick where he can push the ball through the front part of the lane with his technique in his hand. Tail of the tape. See the age difference there. And well, there's a, kind of a big difference right there. But but let's let's give let's give Simonson some time. Jason starting on the right lane. Throws that one in. Oh, this is a heavyweight battle from the start. Strike track powered by Kia. Straighter is not greater today. No, they're going around the world right now. Jason Belmonte, match number one, eight strikes. Match number two, eight strikes. Match number three, there's a trend, Randy. Eight strikes. And he's got two through two. The arsenal for Simonson. the end of his release. Check out the footwork from Anthony here. Well, look how far up he's starting because he has to try to get around the bar return. And we saw Chris Prather do that. Remember when he stood in front of the bar return on the right lane, but then he took his regular approach on the left lane. Simonson does it different. He takes the same approach on both lanes. Watch how far up on the left lane he moves. Man, I just can't stop looking at that beard. I'm jealous. I can't grow facial hair like that. Every time I try to grow facial hair, I look like a dog that has a mange. Looks like he should be on the back of a buggy. <laughs> Through the nose. Yeah, look, you can see it right here. Look at it right here. Didn't quite push it far enough to the right. And you can see break point board was a good three boards difference. Inside of target, but just the three six. Who's that one up? See the numbers all time when these two go toe to toe in the TV finals. We've got Loft. 
seeking his eighth all-time World Series of Bowling title. Nobody's won more at the World Series than that man, Jason Belmonte. And the adjustments, the in-game adjustments he's made, outrageous. Milwaukee, we have liftoff. You saw some curl. And a party in the pit again. How about he's playing the two board on the left side of the lane? <laughs> the lay down. I love, I love it when you giggle. <laughs> Is that crazy? Oh my gosh. I used to play there all the time, said me never. There's the loft. He has to, otherwise, if he lays the ball down where he's sliding, it'd go in the left gutter. So he's got to give it some air time. Both players using the same bowling ball. Simon using a UFO alert as well. Simonson just a little bit right of where Belmonte's playing, but pretty much the same kind of shape. Again, just 25 years old. Third of his titles have been majors. Oh, what an awful break. 410 What an awful break. Just a little bit high, and it should have been just been a four pin, but because of the sharpness of the angle entering the pins, he left the 10 with it. Goes after the four, tries to kick it to the 10, doesn't happen, open frame. All right. Got to regroup now. So after a pair of opening strikes, he's gone eight spare and then open frame. He's down 35, just like that. Lane Talk is telling me the 410 split on Scorpion throughout the World Series of Bowling, 0%. No one's converted it. Better? Oh, no. Oh, no. <sighs> Well, we've seen this made before. Wow, he did not wait at no. all, did he? No. Uh. Yeah, Belmo right now is saying, how much torque should I put on your throat? As he has got Simonson right where he wants him. Back-to-back -back open frames for Anthony. Belmo, four straight strikes to open up. Oh, Jason. Didn't like it. Is it going to curve? No way. His first off shot since, geez, I don't know, maybe match two? Yeah, that was big right. First time leaving this throughout the Scorpion tournament. One, two, four, eight. He's going to throw it straight at it. Mm -hmm. Good cover. All right, no harm done. That remains clean. Lead is at 42 pins in our title match. I mean, this is a guy. Can I please take my first three, right? This is a guy that prides himself on being a shot maker. Why do you think he's taking a re-rack right now? Um, it, it's one of... In my... Never mind. It's one, one of, only one of two reasons. He doesn't like the pin configuration. Maybe there's a pin slightly off spot. Or he wants to buy a little bit of time and regroup from that last shot he threw. Or have Mr. Simonson sit down there a little bit longer and think about those back-to-back -back open frames. There's the re-racks. Under the players' names. Left. Way left. And how many times do we see this? Look at that. When a player gets one wide, the overcompensation. Speed down to 16.4.
You wait, you step a saying back in the day, nobody misses the five pin. I actually missed one on television during the Tournament of Champions. Well, we just saw the cutaway of the fans. A yeah, lot yeah. of them putting the, the big five up in the yeah, yeah. up in the uh, rafters. Yeah. The meaning, of course, is if you miss the five. Yeah. Uh, I think if you miss the five, then you have to buy everybody that's holding their hand up a beer. You think? You know that. Simonson's changing balls now. He's going to a Wolverine. Here he is in the sixth. Wolverine can't drop the seven. Unlucky. Is that the four pin that just kind of scooted its way all the way across? I'm not sure it happened so fast. Did you know that the five pin was left 65 times in this tournament? It was made 97% <laughs> of the time. It was missed twice. And no, I wasn't bowling. <laughs> oh, man. All right, we are on track for another route. Belmo took care of Tackett by 55. Took care of Tommy Jones by 34. Took care of Packy Hanrahan by 56 pins. Yet, it's been far from easy for him. Yeah. Well, he made it look easy. Sure has. Oh. There you go, Anthony. Much needed strike for Anthony Simonson. Yeah. His first since the second frame. Right here, folks, is the number you want to look at. The max scores. But the last two shots for Belmonte have not been his best. Yeah, back-to-back -back spares for Belmo after an opening hand bone. A little bit deeper for Anthony with that ball change. Here's Jason on the right lane now. Better. Oh! When it's your night, it's your night. 7-10? I don't ah. think so. Here's Loft. Laying it down right next to the left gutter. There's the rotation. There's the 7-10. Good night, 7-10. Head pin dropping the 7 there late. Can increase his lead to 51. That was pretty close. Well, Phil Frames. Right now, Belmonte is at 225. Max score for Simonson, 224. When I say Belmonte's at 225, that's if he spare strikes the rest of the game. He already has two wins this season. He's our player of the year favorite with a lot of tournaments left to be bowled, but if he wins this, which it looks like he's going to. And we talked about it in the outset, right? We said Anthony Simonson, an opportunity here yeah. tonight with the win and with uh, the events that are still lurking out there could very easily pull himself into the conversation. Sixth at the World Championship on Sunday. Sixth at the TOC. And we could see more from Belmont with the shark. Simonson, come on. I, I'm going to be really interested to see how Anthony reacts to this. And, and I don't want to bring up too much of the past. But you can see the frustration certainly yeah, settling absolutely. in on him. And, and, and that happens to everybody Fork out there. off. As I was saying.
kind of the exact opposite of <sighs> the match he had with Belmonte at the U.S. Open, right? It was Belmonte with all the trouble. Simonson just kind of grinded, grinded him out and then went on to beat E.J. Tackett. Yeah, Belmo's done with this. Uh, I'm sorry, I Anthony Simonson is done with this. Yeah, he's had enough because... He, he, he had enough a couple frames ago. I mean... Right. Well, the back-to-back -back splits, and then when he does hit the pocket, he doesn't strike. And, and, and I get it. Yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. I understand it. This is the title match. You're the one seed. Frustration. You're going against a, a, a living legend in Jason Belmonte. And, and it's by a wide margin, but... Oh my goodness. Look at that curl. Look at that curve. This one is, is done. Done and dusted. Belmo with the win. It is over. We'll see when he celebrates, right? Because I think he's still a little perplexed by these lanes, and he hopes to see them again tomorrow night on the Shark Show. Well, over the years, this guy is dominated the World Series of Bowling and back at it. Winning another title here. Yeah, boy. Elbow. Boom! And there it is. We haven't seen him kind of unleash himself tonight because some of these strikes were just so hard to come by. It was such a battle and grind for him and the adjustments, but there it was, that one moment where he said it just paid off. Still two more shots, but the title is his. His 28th of his illustrious career. His third win this season. And he took down some top-notch talent to get there. E.J. Tackett, Tommy Jones, Packy Hanrahan, and now Anthony Simonson. Climbs the ladder, not one match was close. And it's just, there's just no question who the best player in the world is. 244. Yeah, that's a, a command performance. Anthony certainly not at his best Let's tonight. Go. We'll see so much Let's more go. from Anthony, but Belmo with a huge win, the satisfying moment of the match, sponsored by Snickers. Nothing satisfies like a Snickers. And the satisfaction of another PBA Tour title for that man, Jason Belmonte. And the numbers just keep growing. We're sitting now, Randy, at 28 career tour titles. I mean, what a turnaround from last season, right? I mean, we literally didn't see him for 10 months. Yeah, that's well, good to have him back. And now he starts this season off with a major victory. And then wins two more times, including this event. Thank you, Bob Christman. Thank you, Dave Sim. Thank you, Storm. Thank you, Coolwick. Thank you, Vice. Thank you, 3G. Aria, Hugo, Sylvie, Bowie, Kimberly, Mum, Dad, Beck, James, Miller, and Sammy. Love you guys so much. Can't wait to come home with a... Big gold trophy. Jason, you were out here putting on a clinic on what it takes to get to the winner's circle, but this was not easy for you because you had some open frames, you had a 7-10 split, but you made it here. How were you able to figure out these lanes when others struggled? They, they were really tricky because there were a few shots through the matches that I thought were pretty good off my hand and the ball didn't look that great. Um, so I knew that the scoring pace tonight was going to be probably on the lower side. And I just had to hit that spot. Just throw one shot, hit that spot. And if you get it going through the pins right, you can put a few together. And, and as it turned out, I put a few together. Uh, and I'm happy. And here we are. But this might not be the last time we see you because you still are in the running for the Shark tomorrow. This is your third win this season. So how do you keep this momentum going and stay focused? Because this has been a grueling schedule for everybody out here. Yeah, it's not easy. We bowl a lot. We bowl all day, every day, and we never seem to, to stop. Uh, but if you're still bowling and you're bowling a lot, it means you're bowling well. So I'd rather that than a lot of off days. Uh, I guess the idea is come back tomorrow, new pattern, new everything, try and do what I did tonight and uh, get another one of these. That'd be fantastic. Well, 28 title. This is number 28 for you. Like I just said, you've won three this year. You are the front runner for player of the year. Thoughts on that? 
Yeah, I mean, there's still the Masters, there's still the playoffs. I mean, Anthony, EJ, these guys are bowling amazing. Chris Prather has kind of thrown his name into the hat as well. It's my job to make it as hard as possible, and uh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to make it as hard as possible for him. Good luck tomorrow, and congratulations on this win. Well, the six-time player of the year. Get out of here. Inching closer and closer to number seven. Head on over to the PBA YouTube channel. Just a couple minutes, we'll give you the PBA post show presented by IKEA. And our guaranteed rate World Series of Bowling coverage continues tomorrow night right here on FS1. 8 Eastern, it's the PBA Shark Championship. For Randy Peterson, Kimberly Pressler, and our entire crew on Rob Stone. Thank you for watching the PBA on FS1. You just saw Jason Belmonte win again. His 28th tour title, his eighth World Series of bowling victory. Bowling's best, at it again, live on FS1.